guys, and welcome back to another episode of Outcast to Icons. Let's take a little look at what's been going on in Rome over the last couple of weeks. Benitez and it's in the back of the net. Roma will nil. Cecina won. Juan Bernardino Benitez with the goal. Flies it out wide to Marks. Can he get on the end of something though? Marks is ball across. Di Placido with the strike and it is 1-1 there. Thoroughly deserved. Marcelo Di Placido, fourth of the season and another assist for Cesar Marks. Good stuff. Can he find a pass now? Oh, goes to the back post for Marks. Great strike from Cesar Marks. Roma 2, Cecina 1. Cesar Marks with his first ever goal for the club. What a great day from him. Oh, it's an own goal. Sorry, guys, I wasn't paying attention. Dalsgaard's not only committed the foul to give away the free kick, he's just put it in his own net. What the hell was that? And there it is, Roma 2, Cecina 2. What the hell happened there? And he's all the way through and scores. That's been coming. It's been one of those games, guys. Every touch we take, it goes eight yards in front of us. Into one, Roma nil. Ball across the box. Irving Dupel's on this, you know. He scored. Bottom corner, Roma into one, Roma one. Amazing comeback, really, when you think about it. Friday now with the free kick, and it's in the back of the net. Well, what can you do, really? There we have it, into two, Roma one. We were never going to win that game. Gianelli's ball in, and it's headed in the back of the net, and oh my goodness, Di Felice gives it, gives Avellino the lead. Roma nil, Avellino one. What is happening to us this month? There we have it, Roma nil, Avellino one. Sometimes you weep for humanity. Jesus Christ. Right, guys, we're back. And um, yeah, if we could get 10 likes on this video, that would be glorious. Now, uh, moving on to a question of today. Question of today? Question of the day. Um, today's question is, what is the most overpowered player that you've played with or against? Now, um, Millington was pretty OP, but I've got to say... Patrick Roberts, when he used to play for Manchester City on my Portsmouth save, he just had this innate ability to win headers against my, uh, like, amazing centre-backs, despite the fact that he had, like, two heading and no jumping reach and he's fucking tiny. Uh, he just used to annoy the crap out of me. I think he not scored, like, a brace of headers in a game against me, despite not even being able to, like, how? They were jumping, he was somehow out-jumping them. He has no, it was just frustrating to see that kind of crap. Um, but there you go. Uh, who's the most OP player you've played with or against? Um... So yeah, getting into things. Now, as you would have seen this month, things have gone a little bit sour and I'm not really sure what happened. I feel like the Chelsea result kind of did something to us, basically, because against Cena, that late own goal was an absolute nightmare. And then against Inter, we were crap. Uh, it was one of those games where in the first minute, one of my players touched the ball, like from a simple pass to them, for some reason, touched the ball eight yards into nowhere and then it was picked up by the opposition and I knew it was going to be one of those games we actually got back into it because I went 4-3-3 with Dan Chev and Elvis and I thought that was going to be enough but we, they scored a free kick and they were the better side so they deserved to win um the game against Avellino though Christ um I cut out all the sweary bits because yeah it was just like I wouldn't want to listen to that I was absolutely raging at the game it was ridiculous I mean it was just utter ridiculousness but that's what you get sometimes isn't it we're not having a lot of luck uh, lately and yeah, we need to be taking our chances, and I don't know how well we're going to do against uh, Stad Room today, but we're going to give it our best shot. So, here's how the league is looking now. So, we were top of the last episode, and now we're down to seventh. Um, Napoli, of course, are having a whale of a time with 18 goals already on the board, flying, frankly, and we're going to have to do a hell of a job to get back into the title race already. Things were looking so good, and now they're looking appalling. Um, so, and as you can see, the Italian league has really slipped off the radar a little bit lately, too, which does not help. Now... Moving on to the squad, of course. Now, we've got ourselves... It's a bit of a fair spread. Placido has got himself four, which is okay, but I need more from him, really. I need him to show me something. Uh, Irving Drupal's got three as well, which is solid. Uh, Capra with two, and everyone else has one. As for assists, well, Cesar Marx has got three and seven, which isn't awful. Uh, player of the matches, of course, is Irving Drupal. Pass rating is still Antonio with 90%, but Boisson is doing decent too, as is Falcao in the middle. Average rating, so far, Halserta, but he's only played two games. Um... I think Drupal's been superb this year, and key passes all about that Caterini man. So, yeah, I'm, I see no reason why we need to dwell, frankly. Let's just jump straight into the game. It's Stad Ream. It's away from home. Their manager has been talking crap about me in the press this week, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, we're actually not bad against these types of systems, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more confident about this than I was, perhaps, um, others. It's nice to see Pedro Grajkovic uh, there in goal for Stad Ream. Of course, the uh, player from Red Star, uh, the, the six people that watched that save will recognise him. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot still to be done. If we pull off some miracle result here, it might set us up nicely, but you just don't know. So here's what we're going to go with. Di Placido, Caterini, Capra, Irving Drupal, Falcao and Marks. At the back, Dalsgaard, Arapi, Marim and Antonio. Now, I think... Uh, hmm. 
Arapi's average rating is worse than Kalashnikov. I'm going to put a Kalashnikov in. We need that experience today. Um, plus, it gives us a bit more uh, versatility should we have to make any changes during the game. So, let's just jump straight into this. We're playing a counter-attacking style today, of course, because it's away from home. I've sort of veered away from that in some of our league games now, changing it very, very quickly um, so we can get on top. They're the favourites, as you would imagine. Let's just turn the highlights back on again. Um... Wait, yeah, everything is still set good. I actually had a look at the 3D highlights of that Dolzgard own goal against um, Cecina because I was so curious as to how the hell that ended up in the back of the net, basically. Um, frustrating one, let, to say the least, considering we'd done really well to get back in and I thought we'd managed to scrape a decent win, but no, not to be. Hopefully this doesn't continue today and we'll pull out a surprise result here. But uh, if we won this game, that would suddenly change the face of this group massively because I think Stad Rima are one of the favourites for this group. It has to be said. Them and Chelsea are obviously the two that are expected to go through. Dolzgard now. And we We've lost the ball. Eze now on the right-hand side. Now, of course, Stad Rima... Oh, God, and they've scored already. Is he offside? He's not offside, is he? No. Lamina Mate makes it 1-0. And, of course, Stad Rima beat us um, two seasons ago in the Champions League in the knockout stages. And it was annoying. I genuinely thought we'd beat them at the time, but we didn't. And we've started off ridiculously poorly today as well. Um, they're clearly one of the best sides in world football. They've won leagues in a league that contains PSG. To give you an idea, I think they're back to the hilt by some kind of tycoon. It would make sense if they are, but they've got an incredible squad. And uh, when I saw that group draw, I was... I mean, remember, Chelsea were the pot two side. Stad Reem were the number one seed in this group. Um, that's what's worrying. Uh, right, how, we've actually got a bit of possession so far. Pass completion isn't too bad, but it's this sort of situation where we're losing headers. Oh, it's just gone straight. This is going to be another one of those inter games where every touch we take takes it straight to them, I think. It feels like that. Lovely long ball, and oh, well done. Says our marks. Oh, dangerous pass still, though. Um, up to Caterini. He's got men out wide. Can he find him? He does. Erbic dribble. Ball back across. Simple chance here. I, I hope to God that was a tackle and he didn't actually deliberately play that ball there. Dawes got... Oh, this is what I mean. What is that? It's going to be one of those games, guys. There we go. They've played a shitty pass too, but we're not alive to it. The Placido's just standing around now up top. He's not the dynamic player he was and it's frustrating. Boisson does well there. Ball glitches a little bit, but the chance was there and we just didn't take it. I don't know why Irving Drupal didn't put the ball in the box. The chance was there. De Placido made the run. All he has to do is put that in the box and probably De Placido scores it. And that's a good touch from him there. Can he run at the defenders? He's into the box. Good stuff. He probably ended up shooting from a stupid angle and he's lost the ball anyway. Um, we just don't look up for it anymore and it's a shame. Um, Castelblanco. Ball into the space. He's got four players around him. Can someone put a foul? No, no one's going to tackle. Um, we might have to get stuck in a little bit. Oh, come on. It went straight over his head. Right, I'll tell you what. We're going to get stuck in because... I'm, I'm sick of my players going next to people and not making a tackle. Sometimes I've had situations so far where there's been like three players surrounding a guy, but nobody actually puts a tackle in. Like, why? Um, there's all very well, like, keeping the shape, but you actually have to tackle them eventually. And it's... Oh, well, there you go. Back of the net. Um, Ricardo Castablanco. It's a good finish from him, and we've been dominated in today's game. But again, nobody's putting a foot in. Nobody's trying to attempt to block the tackles. We may have to close down more, actually. Um, it's going to pull us out of shape, though. That's my worry. It's just frustrating when there's a player right there. And look. It goes right through his fucking foot. Great strike, though. It can't take nothing away from that goal. Uh, the actual goal itself was a fantastic hit from Castablanco. Right. Um, yes, we do need to close him down. No fucking shit. Um, right, we're going to turn off... We're actually going to close down more and see if this helps. I don't think it will. Uh, we're gonna, I don't see the point in time marking. It means that we just end up getting off caught with offsides. Uh, Caterini's ball in. De Placido's header out of nowhere. We're back in it. We don't really deserve it, to be honest. But it is a fifth goal of the season. Stadream 2. Um, yeah, Roma 1. We're back in it. Not really, though, but it might be a stepping stone with which we can build. Caterini, it's a lovely ball in, actually. Just dinks it into a great area. Di Placido's up, and that's a great header from him. Goalkeeper maybe could have done a little bit better, but it's his fifth of the season. He is at least still scoring goals, but we need more from him. We need more than that. Uh, hello, corner chance. Go short to Capra. Is there a chance here? Di Placido brings it down, and Rakovic makes the save very comfortably. It almost looked like he flicked that up into his own hands in a very nonchalant kind of way, and frankly, I wouldn't blame him. It was a very weak header. Uh, I don't think that was the highlight anyway, though. Somalia now Mate, there's so much space in the middle for some reason cluster blanco is all the way through and he's missed it hmm okay there was a huge gap opened up and that might be because we're closing down more and that's worrying though um we don't have much choice in this second half other than to go on attacking really uh, we'll sort out dalsgaard here though hopefully uh, oh maybe not okay fair enough um and the reason guys that i don't like 
look at this and then go and find it is because it takes too long to do. I do that normally in games, but when we're doing live comms, sometimes it's just easier to get through stuff so that we don't, I'm not needlessly messing around on loads of menus and stuff. I do do like team talks and individual player talks and all this sort of stuff off camera, but there's no point in me doing it in the episodes because it's just needless filler. Um, because sorry, I say sometimes see comments about how oh, you should do this, you should do that. I do do that, but there's no point in me showing it because it doesn't add anything to the episode. Um, Falcao now to Capra. Hmm. We're going attacking. What can we change? Like, what is going to make this better? Like, the problem is they're getting in behind us. We're closing down a bit more. I don't want to try an offside trap. We maybe should close down their goalkeeper, though, so they can't play short passes out the back. But I'm not sure what else to do here. Um, Castella Blanca, yes, he's a very good player. Close him down. Like, I basically want you to be inside his shorts. That's how much I want you to be on him. Um, we're going to have to make some subs soon. This is getting silly. And Cesar Marks. Ah. Uh... Have we actually got anyone that can even come close? That's the problem. We've got so little. He's going to have to stay out there because unless I bring Garcia on on the other wing. I know that seems silly, but Cesar Marks is buggered and he's not had a good game anyway. Um, Erwin Drupal's not had a great game either, but we need someone on there, really. Um, Kappa will probably come off as well, actually. I'm thinking how Seto would be great, but we can't because he's not registered. Um, actually... Kalashnikov's been poor and we'll get a rappy on just for the final half an hour but I, I don't see us getting anything from this game it's just we're not creating any traction we've got more possession but that is very very little of import of a very little importance at this stage um I will tell them to, to concentrate a bit actually no we'll, let's do something a little bit different let's tell them to push forward we need something from them um just to show a bit of fight really to show that they actually do want to compete in this sir because this would be a poor start to the group frankly and if this is the way it continues we're We'd have no chance of even getting third, I would have thought. Falcao now with the ball. Is there a chance here? Capra whips it in, cleared away, and they'll break on us and score. So that'll be 3 1 to Stad Reem now. Um, I'm just going to wait for it to happen, though. Take a little drink while that happens. Mate, oh, across to Castablanco, and it's in the back of the net. Oh, I should have bet in play now, really, shouldn't I? Oh, well. Um, that was always going to happen, wasn't it? <laughs> Sometimes this game is almost too predictable. It's a fantastic ball, though, from uh, Mate to pick this one out. But. Great first time strike. Castel, that guy, Castel Blanco, is a quality player, I have to say. He looks amazing. Um, well, he's amazing against us. Whether he's actually got any decent stats or not is a completely different matter. Falcao, now to Capra. Can he get another ball in? Di Placido's header, and it's 3 2, amazingly. Out of nowhere, Di Placido has at least picked up some form himself. He's scored twice, pretty much. Two consolation goals, unless we've got something massive coming uh, later. Capra now, outside of the foot cross. Di Placido, another spectacular header, and the goalkeeper's just going. Um, Bye. Uh, are we on overload? I don't think we are. So I'm going to immediately shove it onto overload. And we're going to say push forward because we've got no choice in the matter. We need to just show some passion. I'm probably going to get myself so someone sent off now, aren't we? But, you know, there's always the hope that we could nick something later on. I don't think it's going to happen. Although there is still a minute to go. Di Pacido isn't going to win that, though. Caterini does win that. Capra does win that. Is there a chance? A ball in now. Ah. Oh. Somalia wins the ball. Oh, come on. We're playing against an entire country at left back. What are we supposed to do? Mate. Out wide to Collado. Good tackle from Antonio, but I sense this is just going to be the wind down to the end of the game, frankly, guys. Uh, sorry, my phone just flashed up with something. Um, and that's a big tackle, but it's been one. And we're just not getting near it, unfortunately. 3-2 is very flattering on us in the end, to be honest. Um, they could have won this game 3-0, and I would not have been able to complain, frankly. We've been that poor. Mate now. And they probably will get a fourth one at this stage now, because there's a huge gap in the middle. Alfredo and... Uh... I don't get this. This is what I find frustrating as balls. How often you see this happen. I mean, it does happen very, very frequently. Right, watch. When this ball comes across, there's a player in the way and he just lets it go straight through him. That happens so much on FM and it is the most infuriating thing uh, to see. And there we are. It's going to be 4-2 to Stad Rene in there, which frankly is completely fair. Um, we've not been good enough, but it's just annoying how often you see those sort of situations happen. I'd like to just concede normal goals, please. Uh, but there we go. Stad Ring 4, Roma 2, and we are already off the pace in this group. I, no, I can be harsh on the players. They were fucking awful. Uh, I'm not going to be aggressive, though. We're going to be... Yeah, thank you. Fire them up a little bit. Um... But there we go. That is a poor start to this group. We've got two games against Anderlecht now, which I really don't think there's any guarantee that we're going to do well in, to be honest. Anderlecht are the strongest side um, in this group. Uh, sorry, the strongest side in that pot four, and they could easily give us a good game. We've just not had it. We've not been at the races at all. Um, and in the next episode, of course, we will be doing Anderlecht. So lots of games to talk about in that episode, of course, uh, with quite an important bunch of league games too, with 
Udinese, Napoli, Palermo, Lazio, Albino Lefe, who are, of course, second in the league. So there'll be a lot of stuff, and I'll probably be very flustered by the time the episode comes around. But there you go, guys. So if you like what you've seen, and I bloody have, look at the way the form has changed. And then do drop a like on the video. That would be fantastic. Um, see if we can get it to 10. If you've enjoyed it even more than that, please do subscribe to the channel for more Outcast icons and from the shadows in your unbox every other day at 7 o'clock. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for what's hopefully going to be a happier episode. But I really cannot guarantee that at this point. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.